Hi everybody, Joe here from Shutterspeak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. So we are nearing that holiday here in the United States, the 4th of July, where there are spectacular fireworks shows basically in every community all over the country. So you're gonna to wanna to have your camera out and ready to get some great fireworks photos. And of course, there are tons of articles and videos on how to take great fireworks photos, but this particular video is going to focus on how to set up your Nikon camera to take great firework photos. Now, the principles in this video apply to any camera, really across any brand, and it doesn't really matter which Nikon camera you have, the menus are going to be very similar, if not the same. So whether you have an Icon Z or whether you have a D850 or a D7000 or something anywhere in between, it shouldn't much matter. This video should uh, be helpful to you no matter which camera you own. So that being said, let's get started. But before we do, I just want to say thank you for being here and watching, taking the time out of your day to spend a little bit of it with me. And if anything in this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell. So with that being said, I appreciate uh, that you are here and let's get started. Okay, so before we deep dive into the menus, there's just a couple of things that I wanna point out that you are going to need if you're going to get great fireworks photos. So the first is you're going to need a steady tripod. So make sure you have a tripod it's gonna be very difficult, if not impossible, to get these really great shots if you do not have a tripod. So make sure you have a, a tripod. And if you don't, I encourage you to get one uh, because you're always gonna need a tripod, honestly. That's really what it comes down to. So in terms of a lens, you're not gonna need an F2.8 lens or a super expensive lens. In fact, like if you have a Nikon Z camera and you have a kit lens, say the 24 to 70 F4, that's gonna be a great choice. Or if you have an 18 to 55, that's gonna be a great choice. So generally speaking, you're gonna kinda of wanna be a little bit wide, but if you happen to be very far away from the fireworks, you might need a mid-range zoom, okay? But you don't need anything that's gonna be particularly great at low light because we're not gonna set very low f-stop. So we're not gonna be setting an f2.8 f f-stop. So you don't need to worry about that. So. You just need your camera, you need your lens, and a good tripod. So what kind of camera settings do we need to get great fireworks photos? Well, I recommend that you set your camera to manual mode, okay? Next thing you're gonna do is set your aperture, okay? And we're going to use F11. Generally speaking, F11 should give us enough depth of field and sharpness to make a really great fireworks photo. Uh, in terms of shutter speed, we can vary our shutter speed a little bit, but about four seconds tends to be really good. There may be times when you want to drop back to three seconds. There may be times when you want to increase all the way up to five seconds. But three seconds uh, is going to be a little bit short. You're going to get a little shorter trail in the burst. Five seconds, you're going to get much longer trails, but you're also going to get a lot more detail in the background. So if you do have a very interesting background, sometimes five seconds is a nice sweet spot to be at. But generally speaking, four seconds is, is also a really great choice for, for almost everything. Now, as the show progresses, especially up to the point where you're starting to hit that grand finale, you might start to see a lot of smoke in the sky from multiple bursts. At that point, you might want to dial it back a little bit to three seconds, maybe even a little bit less than that, just to try and eliminate some of that smoke that's going to be in the sky. Maybe you might even have to dip down to two seconds, but that's just gonna be a little bit of trial and error on things like that. But at the grand finale, like I said, usually there does tend to be a lot of smoke that fills up the sky. So definitely you might need to dial back shorter shutter times rather than longer ones. But if you're not experiencing that problem, then by all means, go with the five seconds and get multiple bursts. All right, so that's pretty much what you're gonna do with your camera in terms of, we wanna go with manual mode, f-stop of f11, and a starting shutter speed of four seconds. 
Okay, so we're in the menu system of a Nikon Z62, but it doesn't really matter which Nikon camera you have because the menus are pretty much laid out almost identical across the board for all Nikon cameras. Okay, so the first stop that we're gonna make is the photo shooting menu. So in the photo shooting menu, oops, sorry about that. We're gonna scroll on down to ISO sensitivity settings. Okay, we're gonna go into ISO sensitivity settings. Set your ISO to 200. That's a pretty much a sweet spot for fireworks that works really well. And then go over to auto ISO sensitivity control and make sure it is set to off because you do not want your ISO to change. We want it to be ISO 200 across the board for all of our photos. Now, we can continue on down. And the other thing that we might wanna take a look at is vibration reduction. Now, Nikon is a little wishy-washy on this when it comes to your Z series cameras, okay? Typically, what Nikon says is if you have a camera that has vibration reduction in the lens, when you're using a tripod, you should shut it off. Now, with the Z-series cameras, okay, there's IBIS built into the camera body. Now, Nikon in the manuals basically says you can leave it on or you can shut it off depending on which is going to work best for you. Now, that doesn't really give us a lot of help, Nikon, but so... I think that in this case, if you're using an Icon Z, you can leave vibration reduction on, or if you want to shut it off, that's at your option. Okay, so the next thing that we need to consider is focus. I would recommend that you go with autofocus single because we don't need to continuously focus uh, the way AFC does with fireworks, but it is also a good idea to use manual focus. So you would focus the camera to infinity and make sure you have a nice sharp firework shot and then switch the camera to manual focus. That way the focus never changes. Now, if you change any settings on your lens, like if you zoom in, if you're at 24 and you wanna zoom in to 50, your focus is gonna change. So that being said, maybe manual focus isn't the best. But if you choose to go with autofocus single, you're going to need something to focus on in a very dark environment. So you may need to wait for that first firework burst to actually get the camera to focus. And so from that point on, you should be fine. You really shouldn't have much problem with focusing. Now, I'll give you a little bit of a pro tip here, how to time getting great firework shots. Wait till you hear the boom of the launch of the firework. When you hear that boom, hit your shutter button, okay? And from that point, you should get the traveling of the mortar up to the sky and then the burst in the sky as well. So that's how you're gonna get that nice trail from the ground up and then the burst in the sky. So just kind of time it with when you hear the sound of the boom. That's that's the, the firework being launched from, from the mortar shell. Um, the next thing you wanna consider is maybe using a remote to trigger your camera. So if you have a newer Nikon series camera, oops, where'd we go? One of the things you can do is you can use SnapBridge. Okay, so if you use SnapBridge, you can use the Bluetooth remote feature of SnapBridge and you can use that to trigger your camera. That way you don't have to touch it and minimize any camera shake from touching the camera and pushing that shutter button. Now, alternately, if you don't have a remote and your camera doesn't work with SnapBridge, you can even use exposure delay mode. So you can go into exposure delay mode and program in a half second delay. That'll give you a half second. So let's say you're using a uh, like a D850, your mirror will flip up. The camera will wait a half second before it takes the picture to just to minimize any shake. Uh, so that's also an option as well. Okay, so if you don't have a remote, if you don't wanna use SnapBridge or can't use SnapBridge for whatever reason, and you did wanna go with exposure delay mode, just swing on down to the custom settings menu of the pencil, and then head on down to D, shooting and display, and then just go right over here to exposure delay mode. And uh, like I said, a half second delay should be fine. I mean, you could even go with a little bit less if you wanted to, uh, and then just, activate that and now you have a half second delay. So again, you'll press that shutter button, 
the mirror will flip up on your mirrored camera. There's no mirror, of course, in the Zs. Um, but after the mirror flips, you'll get a half second delay before the, the image is taken. On the Z, you're just gonna get a straight up half second delay after you press that shutter button. It's a little bit better than using the self timer because we have a lot shorter lengths of time using exposure delay mode. So that's kind of one of the benefits to this over using the self timer, which would accomplish something similar, but it would make it very hard to time with the launch of the fireworks. Okay, so the last thing we can consider is going back up to our photo shooting menu and using long exposure noise reduction. So turning this on is going to give you a little less noisy image with that long three, four, five second exposure. Personally, I like to remove noise afterwards in post. I shoot it in raw and then I'll go into Lightroom or use something like Topaz uh, Denoise AI and I'll remove the noise that way. However, if you're not comfortable with those products or don't have them, long exposure noise reduction, then it's probably a good choice for you. All right, so that's everything you're gonna need to be successful in getting great fireworks photos. Steady tripod, that 24 to 70 lens, setting to manual, ISO 200, F11, four second exposure time. If you're not using something like Lightroom, or something like that that can handle noise really well, turn on long uh, exposure noise reduction, and use a remote like SnapBridge or a remote, or if absent that, your exposure delay mode. All right, so I hope that helps you out. And if anything in this video has helped you out, please help me out by, again, hitting subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, by all means, leave me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are. If you follow the channel, you know. I try and answer as many comments, almost all of them, uh, as best I can. So leave me a note and just say hello, and I'll probably say hi back. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and I hope you get some great fireworks photos. And if you do, please let me know. All right? Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, YouTube.